Hi everyone! Today we're making zucchini burger. So today we're going to use courgette, known to many of you as zucchini. Um, it's courgette in the UK. We're going to use courgette to create beautiful patties to go with our burgers today. So every bite into it, you have that slight crunch from the courgette that makes it so satisfying. So let me show you how to make it. So the ingredients you need. So this is really, really simple. So the first thing we need is, of course, courgettes. So I'm going to use about two to three medium-sized courgettes like this for the recipe. And then we need an onion and plenty of mushrooms. So I'm using chestnut mushrooms because I prefer the slight crunchy texture. But you can use white mushrooms, butter mushrooms, it's up to you. And then I'm going to add in some toasted pine nuts. So these I've just toasted earlier on. You can use chopped nuts of your choice. It's totally fine. We want to add some nutty crunch into the burger. But if you use pine nuts, make sure they're toasted. Toasted pine nuts taste so much better. Toasting them will release that beautiful pine nut flavor. So make sure they're lightly toasted. Just place them in the dry frying pan in low heat, no oil, and gently toast them until they're golden brown. And they're so good. I can just eat them like this. And finally, it's kind of optional, but I'm going to add in some nutritional yeast here. So it will give the patty a rounder flavor. So I highly recommend it. And on top of that, we just need some salt and pepper. And this is it. So the first thing we're going to do is to shred the courgettes. So this is when a food processor really can help you. I mean, it's your best friend in the kitchen. So I'm going to use the shredder blade here. If you're planning to cook on a regular basis, and I highly recommend that you invest in the food processor. So I'm going to just put a lid on. And you don't have to get anything too fancy. Any processor that can chop, can shred, and can blend, that would do. So we're going to pop in our courgettes here and to shred it. Done. So that's our shredded courgette. I'm going to transfer it to a bowl here and then we're going to chop the rest of the vegetables. I think having the courgette grated like this really makes a difference. It helps the patties to maintain the shape. And by the way, if you don't have a food processor, you can just use a cheese grater like this to grate your courgette. And now I'm going to switch to a chopper. I and mean, this is increasingly looking like an infomercial for food processors. <laughs> and then I'm going to pop in all my mushrooms here. Just pop the whole thing in. And then my onions. So I just peel them and chop them in big pieces. Doesn't matter what shape they are. We're going to chop them finely. Lid on. So instead of just chopping all the way through, I'm going to pulse it a few times. And give it a little mix here. So I want them to be finely chopped, but not turning into just mush because we're going to saute them. So I think this is okay. It's nice to have some chunky bits, but not too chunky. Okay, so something like this. Okay, with a shredded courgette, we're going to add some salt in it. So just have a couple pinches of salt. And then give it a gentle mix. So what we're trying to do with the salt is to help the courgette to release its liquid. We want to reduce the water content in the courgette. So our burger is not going to be waterlogged. Okay? And then we're going to leave it aside for about 10 to 15 minutes. And now we're going to saute the chopped vegetables. Okay, in our frying pan, we're going to add in some oil. So I'm using olive oil. You can use coconut oil or any kind of oil you like. And then turn the heat on. So using medium heat, we're going to saute our chopped mushrooms and onion. We just chuck the whole thing in. So the frying will give the vegetables a lot of flavors, but one of the main purpose is really to extract the excess liquid. So we're going to add in some salt here as well. So the salt here will help the vegetables to release its liquid. You don't need a huge amount, just a sprinkle. So we don't want any excess water to make the patties soggy. So you can see the vegetables is releasing its liquid here. So you want to fry them until the water is completely gone. Okay, so you can see the liquid is almost completely gone. So I think we're almost ready. I mean, it smells lovely. 
It's led with this beautiful onion and mushroom paste that's going to be so intense. Okay, I think it's ready. I'm going to switch the heat off and then I'm going to leave it aside to cool. Okay, now let's look at the courgette. So you can see the volume has visually decreased. So what it is, is the water has come out of the courgette. And now we're going to squeeze the water out. We're literally just going to gently press the courgette for the water to come out completely. So you can see there's water in there. Can you see that? We're going to discard the water. So you might need to repeat this process a few times because there's quite a lot of liquid in courgette. So the more thorough you squeeze out the liquid, the better your patty will bind. Okay, great. So that's pretty dry to me. And now we're going to mix everything up. And now let's create a patty mixture. So we've got everything ready here. So the first thing is our mushroom and onion mixture. So I'm going to just pop it in there. It smells so lovely. So you want a mixture to cool up almost completely before you use it. And then we're going to add in our courgette. Just pop everything in. That looks really beautiful. And then we're going to sprinkle some toasted pine nuts. The amount is up to you. I like plenty. Again, you can use chopped nuts, you know, any nuts you like, and it will give it a lot of crunch. And then some black pepper. I like plenty of black pepper in there. It just gives it a little bit of a kick. And then a tiny bit of salt. Remember we have salt in all the vegetables. And so we're going to add a little bit and then we're going to taste it once we mix it and you can decide whether you need more. And then our psyllium husk. I'm going to add in one tablespoon. So for the quantity of the recipe, one tablespoon should be plenty, but it really depends on how thoroughly you dry the ingredients. If you find it slightly watery, then add a little bit more, uh, maybe one or half teaspoon at a time. And now we're going to mix it. I'm going to use the spatula first and then switch to my hands. Okay, I'm going to use my hands, it's easier. So give it a thorough mix. You want to make sure the psyllium husk is mixed thoroughly into the ingredients. And then what you want to do is probably have a quick taste. I mean, there's nothing in the mixture here that you can't eat. There's a bit of psyllium husk in there, but very small amount. So taste it, and then you can decide whether you need more salt or not. So for me, maybe a little bit more. And then mix. Okay, so that's our patty mixture done. Super easy. And now I'm going to cover it with a towel or a piece of cling film. I'm going to leave it in the fridge to rest for about 15 minutes. Okay, now we're ready to fry the patties. So I'm going to use coconut oil to fry my patties and then turn the heat on. So you need enough oil to coat the frying pan so nothing will stick. So I'm using medium heat or maybe slightly above. So here's my patty mixture that's been rested in the fridge. I'm gonna just grab a chunk. So how big you make it is up to you but I want it to be able to fit in my burger buns. So what I normally do is kind of throw it from left to right a little bit. This will help to remove any kind of air or gaps in your patty and give it a little gentle pat and make it into a ball shape to start with. And then we'll shape it into a patty. So you can pre-make it on the side. I tend to make it on the go, but if you're more organized, you can make them first and then fry them. So that's my first patty. I'm gonna just plate down here. My second patty. Just make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. And that's my third patty. So I'm using medium heat, not too strong. So this will ensure that it has time to cook through. Move them around like this to make sure the bottom is not sticking. It's really cute. So we're going to attempt to flip through. Oh, that's lovely. So it doesn't matter if you flip it over and it's not brown enough, you can always flip it back. So now you want to press it down a little bit and start to make it more like a patty shape. So if you start with a patty shape to start with, the mixture has a tendency to spread. So you're going to end up with patty that's maybe too thin. So if you start with a round shape, and then you can shape it along the way. 
So the best way to flip is using two spatulas. Oh, it's beautiful. And then press it down a little bit. And we're going to flip this one. That's lovely. And if you need more oil, just add a bit more oil in the bottom. It's important it doesn't stick. Okay, I think our patties are ready. I'm going to turn the heat off. And I'm going to leave my patties to cool down a little bit. Look at that, it's so beautiful. And uh, we're going to make burgers. Okay, it's burger time. So it's not a burger without the burger buns, right? So here we go. So I baked these this morning, so they're still really fresh. And uh, I'm going to slice the side way and turn into a burger bun. So there you go. It's so satisfying. Look at this beautiful texture. If you haven't made this bread, you must. So I've put a link to the recipe underneath. And this bread is just so good. I mean, look at the beautiful bouncy texture. Okay, assembly time. So here's a beautiful base of the burger. And I'm going to spread on top of it my favorite vegan mayonnaise. I mean, you can use coconut yogurt to season it with a little bit of salt. You can use vegan yogurt for it. Or you can make my vegan tartar sauce. I'll put a recipe underneath as well. But today, I'm going to enjoy this vegan mayonnaise and just cover it generously. And then I've got some beautiful toppings here. I'm going to put a slice of tomatoes on top. Perfect size. And to start off our show, our patty. So I'm going to gently lift it and then place it on top. Look at that. So you want it to almost cool off completely before you eat it. You'll give it a much better texture. The size is perfect. And on top of it, I'm going to spread another layer of the vegan mayo. I mean, I couldn't resist just on top. And I'm going to pop some of this pungent watercress on top. I love watercress. And the mayo really helps it to stick as well. And then if you're brave, a few strips of the red onion. There's no need to talk to me for the rest of the day, so don't worry. And then last but not least, I'm going to spread some mayo on top of the burger as well, the lid. And this will help it to stick and it makes it very creamy. And then we're going to just strategically place it on the side. And I don't think you can go wrong with a few gherkins on the side. There's cute little things. And then a nice bunch of watercress over here. Beautiful. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to eat. So there you go. Here's our zucchini koje burger. I can't wait to tuck in. Okay, so now is the time to put a little hat on. Wow, it feels amazing just holding it. It's our zucchini burger. So look at that. Holding it is just satisfying enough. Just look at the burger. It's just lovely. And the bun is beautiful as well. If you haven't made these buns, please try it. So there is no elegant way of eating burgers, as we all know. So I'm not going to try. I'm going to just bite in. Mmm. Mmm. So wonderful. I just need a moment. It goes so well with the bun. It's amazing. The courgette still has some crunch to it. So it makes it doubly satisfying when you bite into it. It's just really, really good. Seriously, that's a great meal. And I challenge you to find someone who doesn't enjoy this burger. So the recipe will make you about four to five patties of similar size. And as I said, the key thing is to extract the excess liquid from the ingredients. So the whole thing bind together and you get much better texture. As for storage, I normally make them one batch at a time. So I make, you know, three or four. So I make about four patties. You can pre-made the patties and then store them in the fridge for, I say, up to three days. You can probably freeze them, but I haven't tried that, so I can't vouch for the results. They're pretty simple to make, so making a small batch at a time is probably a better idea. I mean, it's always nice to eat everything fresh. So I hope you like today's recipe. We'll give it a go. I mean, these burgers are so good. If you're already making my keto crusty buns, 
you'll really, really enjoy this burger. So follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I post the food I eat and recipes from this channel. So make sure you check out my Instagram. So thank you for hanging out with me today and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.